Hey guys, welcome once again. You know, I was just wondering, every circuit is incomplete without a diode. It plays an important role from the prediction circuits to sensors. This time, we'll cover all the necessary types of diodes, their significance and the selection process. This might be a series of several videos and we'll try to have a look at all of them. So let's start. Well, I'll skip its history and will directly jump to their types, application, characteristics and selection process of the diodes. Let's see the different types of diodes. This is the PN junction diode. Second is Zener diode, the light emitting diode, photo diode, Schottky diode, wire actor, varistor, TVS diode and there are other diodes such as gun diode, pin diode and tunnel diodes. We'll discuss the selection process of these diodes. And these diodes are not very commonly used. Those diodes are generally used in microwave applications. This is the PN junction diode. This is very basic and most commonly used. This is its symbol. This terminal is anode. This is the cathode. Every diode symbol is derived from this. Here are the operational characteristics of the PN junction diode. We can use a diode in two biasing condition. First is the forward bias and second is the reverse bias. This figure shows the diode curve. In forward region, positive terminal of the battery is connected to anode and negative terminal is connected to the cathode. And the same condition is vice versa for the reverse region. This part is called as forward drop voltage which is generally 0.7 volts. The PN junction diode is commonly used in rectification, clipper, clamper and voltage multiplier. Let's see the rectification process. There are various topologies of rectification. This is the half wave rectifier. This is the full wave rectifier. And this is the bridge rectifier. The rectifier changes AC input to pulsating DC. Out of these, the bridge rectifiers are commonly used in power supplies. The power supply contains AC source at the input providing sinusoidal AC wave. Rectifier converts it into pulsating DC. Then the filter smooths out the DC pulses and regulator gives the pure DC output. The bridge rectifier is made up of four diodes shown in the figure. Now, we'll have a quick view on the working of the bridge rectifier. If you see this diagram, there are four connection points. These two are connected to the input and these two are connected to output. Let's name these diodes as D1, D2, D3 and D4. During positive half cycle, the diode D1 gets forward biased and current flows through this direction and the circuit gets closed through this diode D2. In negative half cycle, the current will flow in this direction. This time, the diode D3 conducts and the flow of the current is the same for output and circuit gets completed by diode D4. This is how bridge rectifier works. There are dedicated bridge rectifiers available in the market which are cost effective and smaller in size, which are commonly used instead of using these four individual diodes. The selection process for both components is the same. For selection of rectifier diode, first we need to consider its PIV, which stands for peak inverse voltage, also known as maximum repetitive peak reverse voltage. It is the maximum voltage across non-conducting rectifier diode. That means when the diode is reverse biased, how much voltage it can block. When the voltage exceeds this value, then diode may damage and can go into breakdown region. The PIV should be as greater as possible. If you are designing it for the power supply, then it should be greater than the input voltage needed to the filter. For example, if the filter capacitor is fully charged at voltage VP is equal to 40 volts, then PIV should be greater than 40 volts plus 15% margin of safety. Next is the average forward current IF. It is the current flowing through the diode when it is forward biased. Here, two diodes are conducting simultaneously. Hence, for this, IF should be the output current for each diode. For example, if the output current is 2 amperes, then the IF should be 2 amperes 
plus 15% safety margin. We are considering the safety margin for worst case conditions due to spikes or any other activities. Third is the repetitive surge current. At the first instance, when the instant power is applied, the filter capacitor looks like a short circuit. Therefore, initially charging current is very large. That current is called as surge current. It is calculated by this formula where V in max is the maximum input voltage applied to the filter capacitor and VR peak to peak max is the maximum permissible ripple at the output of the filter capacitor. Well, this formula is used if the mains frequency is 60 Hz. For 50 Hz frequency, we have to use this additional formula. Next is the forward voltage drop. It is the voltage across the diode when the diode is in forward bias, that is when it is conducting. It should be as low as possible. The next is the operating temperature. It is a temperature range which shows in which temperature condition the diode can work efficiently without being destroyed. Well, these are the necessary parameters needed to select a rectifier diode. These all details are available in the data sheet of the diode which you will select. You have to compare the calculated values with actual ones and your diode is ready for rectification. I will upload more videos regarding the selection of diodes for other applications as well. Till then, stay tuned and if you have any questions, you may ask in comment sections and hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you will get the updates about my new videos. Watch my previous videos if you have any interest in technology and I'm sure you'll definitely find some interesting information. And finally, thanks for watching.